are watching Rajasabha TV's special continuous coverage of the budget. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. Right now on the program, I have two special guests with me. Let me introduce them to you. Uh, Mr. P.C. Modi, Chairman, Central Board of Direct Taxes, and uh, Mr. M. Ajit Kumar, Chairman, Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs. Mr. Modi, I'd like to begin, uh, you know, this segment with you. Uh, tax return filers increased to 6.48 crores in 2020 from 3.31 crores in 2014. So clearly, a lot is being done as far as widening the tax base and the tax net is concerned. What's happening on that front? Well, in fact, over the years, uh, what we have been focusing on is in streamlining the tax administration in the country. And uh, a kind of an ecosystem which we have tried to develop is that uh, right from the uh, obtaining of a permanent account number to the filing of return of income to the processing to the assessment process and now even the appeal process everything we are trying to do it on an electronic mode and uh, a total digital format which essentially ensures that the ease of compliance is there in terms of uh, not running from pillar to post and uh, plus the fairness and the speed with which we can uh, conclude the proceedings. I mean, say, along with that, trying to make available the information of financial transactions which comes to the notice of the department directly to the taxpayer in his own account with the e-piling portal. I mean, say, these are some of the methods in which the taxpayer has been prompted to discharge his obligations correctly and properly. And that is primarily the reason for this increase in the tax base. And we are quite hopeful that with these changes, once they stabilize and further consolidate, the taxpayer uh, population in this country is going to increase further. The direct taxes part in the budget comes at the end. It is something that many people look forward to because they want to know what's in it for them. This time around, direct taxes remain unchanged. Would you say that, you know, the expectations were too high expecting some kind of a change there? No, on the contrary, I would say that uh, people were expecting some sort of uh, increase in the tax uh, uh, rate or uh, at least some kind of a cess, which was widely being talked about. The very fact that we did not increase any tax rate or, or impose any kind of a cess should come as a welcome uh, relief to the taxpayers. Above all, there were certain other provisions which were beneficial to them, like say for example, uh, the affordable housing, the interest uh, enhanced deduction uh, which, we were give, which was announced in the last budget. That was going to get over on this 31st of March. That period has been extended. So like that, for the startups also, the eligibility period was coming to an end in this 31st March. Again, that has one year, one year extra has been given to them. So there have been benefits of that nature. I mean, things which were already announced, but during the pandemic times, they could not make full use of those uh, benefits which were uh, given to them. So for that, this extension of time will be quite helpful. Coming to you now, uh, Mr. Kumar, let's talk about uh, indirect taxes as well. Uh, the finance minister in his speech spoke about bringing about you know, further reforms as far as indirect taxes are concerned, ensuring that this uh, process is even more streamlined. So what needs to be done, what has been done, what can we expect on that front? As far as the customs uh, is concerned, you will agree that we have made it, the whole process an IT experience. People are now able to do their entire transaction sitting at their home. Unlike the income tax where you had you interact with the department pay, pay, maybe to pay a taxes once in a year for the common taxpayer, in the case of customs, you have to repeatedly come to our offices. Each transaction is, is uh, taxable. What we have done is to ensure that the whole process has become faceless, contactless and paperless. That has been the driving light of, of the whole whole uh, scheme and we have been seeing that because of this our exporters our importers have are been able to become more competitive because timelines for the, the goods uh, leaving the port and reaching their uh, factories have come down this has re uh, resulted in reduction in their costs and it has made them much much more competitive 
they are they are very very now positive now they know that if they will require certain goods for their factory for a certain shift they know that they need not import it months in advance and incur that cost they can do it and they can clear the goods from the from the port within 24 hours and you know since we're talking about customs let's also talk about the customs being rationalized as far as gold and silver are concerned but then there is a little bit of a cess as well that has been included to that so uh, what is the kind of impact that you see uh, you know this particular aspect having there was a demand from both the trade and also from the think tanks saying that there should be a reduction in the duty on on uh, gold uh, one was from the of course from the consumers it, uh, they felt that it would help them and the second was that a very high tax regime also encourages smuggling so it was felt that some rationalization has to be done as far as the uh, taxes on precious metals were concerned. At the same time, government had wanted to uh, garner revenue for the new uh, agriculture infrastructure cess. So there they had, what they had done is that they had carved out a certain portion. We have reduced the rate of duty on gold, let us say, from 12%, 12.5% to 10%. But what we have done is, a part of it has been absorbed by BCD. We have made the, the basic customs duty at 7.5% and the remaining portion of 10%, 2.5% has been taken up by this by this test. So, the, for, as far as the consumer is concerned, he gets a lo lower duty rate of, of 10%. But whereas the government is concerned, it gets a, a revenue, uh, a separate budget ahead for the purpose of invest, investing in agriculture infrastructure. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to go back to a point that uh, Mr. Kumar was making in his opening remark about technology and the role that technology really has played as far as taxes are concerned and as far as the economy as a whole is concerned. Because, you know, the government has taken several steps through di Digital India to ensure that the entire financial system is further digitized. What kind of an impact is that having, uh, you know, Mr. Modi? You see, so far as the direct taxes are concerned, now we have a complete uh, architecture whereby right from the stage of obtaining a permanent account number to the filing of return of income to the processing of returns or the assessment or the appeal process the entire end-to-end -end, uh, process is happening in an electronic mode in a digital mode so that that brings in not only uniformity consistency efficiency and effectiveness all put together and at the end of it, it is the taxpayer who benefits from this seamless uh, working. The very fact that uh, this year when the returns were filed, I mean the people could get refund in within a day or two of their filing of uh, the return of income is a sufficient testimony to the fact that what technology can do to help the taxpayer. And in order to provide better taxpayer services, technology is going to be used in a big way. So use I would, of just, the, I, I would just like to add to what he has said. What he has spoken to is the use of IT for the help of the, of the taxpayer. We are also using the IT to catch those people who are trying to evade taxes. So the IT is being used at both ends. Earlier it was, was mainly used for helping the, uh, the taxpayer and to ensure that he's able to, to do his compliances online. Now we are both collaborating and we are also using the help of, of, of other departments to ensure that People who are trying to game the system, who are not trying to not pay their taxes, do not succeed in their endeavor. And we have seen that this has resulted in a huge amount of tax. Our field of officers have done a huge amount of work in the past few months to go after these people. And we are seeing the buoyancy in revenue is also a part of that effort. I would not say that's the only effort. The economy is doing well, but this has also played an important role in that. Absolutely. And you know, let's take this aspect of uh, faceless resolution forward and you know how it has helped, how it is likely to help going forward too because we're talking about technology that is part of the process. You know, dispute resolution committee is to be formed for small tax dispute under faceless mechanism. You know, how far is, will this go and how is, how is it going to help small taxpayers? You see, the entire focus of the government has all along been how to reduce tax litigation. and. With that uh, view in mind, we got this Vivad Se Vishwas scheme, which has met with a stupendous success uh, as of now. To continue the process further, that uh, the future disputes do not uh, happen or they can be resolved amicably, 
that is why this scheme has been uh, announced of dispute uh, resolution committee where the small taxpayers would benefit uh, there the question is that a person having say a return income up to 50 lakhs and if say the addition in uh, his assessment is uh, say 10 lakhs and above he can approach the dispute resolution committee he has the option either to go to the appellate process or through this mechanism and they will also be having the powers to uh, grant immunity from penalty and prosecution. So an alternative dispute resolution uh, uh, criteria or a process is available to the taxpayer. So this would, we are sure, would uh, lead to uh, further reduction in tax litigation. Absolutely. And you know, Mr. Kumar, as far as GST is concerned, how do we ensure that we weed out some of the anomalies that continue to exist? How do we fine-tune it even further and ensure that we get a well-finished end product? As far as GST is concerned, you know that it does not come under the purview of the budget and that it is based on the GST council which decides what are the rates for taxes and how we have to, to go about it. It's only the decisions which have been taken there that have found, found uh, 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 mentioned in the, in the budget, whatever, whatever changes in law was agreed by the council that have been made, uh, made uh, uh, evident in the, in the budget. Now, as far as GST is concerned, there has been a lot of concern amongst the states that there has been inversion of duty in, in certain, certain goods. Those inversions have to, have to be changed. There are certain items where the levies are, uh, are high, maybe some rationalization of duties are concerned, that has to be done. But all this it was felt was, it was not the right time to do it at the middle of the pandemic. Perhaps in the next council meeting or the meetings after that, these may come up for consideration and at that time, this rationalization of taxes will definitely be looked into. Okay, final closing comments uh, from both the panelists before I let you go with the best way forward, starting first with you, Mr. Modi. You see, uh, hitherto we were, as a revenue department, we were always perceived to be uh, tax enforcers. We would much like to be perceived as tax facilitators. Absolutely, absolutely. That's a very, a very positive and a very nice note. The same goes to the police as well. They are looked at as, uh, you know, enforcers, but not as someone who may help you out. So hopefully that happens there too. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Kumar, final I comments. would totally agree with, with Mr. Modi. That is how we, the department would like to be known for. As a, a very tax-friendly uh, uh, department, which is helping the taxpayer to, to discharge his duties uh, properly and also to ensure that the tax rates are moderate and, and that it is it it helps the country to develop absolutely thank you so much gentlemen for joining me on the program sharing your views and putting things into perspective for us thank you thank well that's you. it from me see you again next time